In today's class, we will be studying what is optoelectronics, that is unit 3. In optoelectronics, first we shall see what is radiative and non-radiative transitions and recombinations in semiconductors. In the previous unit, we have studied in detail the working of a PN junction. First, let us try and understand what is radiative and what is non-radiative transitions and recombinations. When we give energy to a system, the electrons will in the valence band take the energy and go to the conduction band. So when an electron leaves the valence band, it creates a hole. Thus, a electron hole pair is generated. Similarly, when an electron combines with the hole, the process is called as a recombination. This recombination is between the electrons that are present in the conduction band with the holes that are present in the valence band. Generation and recombination of electron hole pair require external energies. The external energies can be like optical, electrical or thermal energies. As said before, such processes are mainly between the valence band and conduction band of a semiconducting material. What is the basic difference between a radiative recombination and non-radiative recombination? In both the cases, there is a recombination of electrons in the conduction band with the holes that are present in the valence band. But when the recombination takes place, energy is given out. In the case of radiative recombination, this excess energy that is given out is in the form of a photon. Optical process associated with the radiative recombinations are absorption, spontaneous emission and stimulated emission. In the case of a non-radiative recombination, when an electron combines with a hole, energy is given out but that energy is in the form of heat. The various processes in non-radiative recombination may be uh, auger recombination, surface recombination or recombination at defects. And this slide shows you the various phenomena associated with a radiative recombination. What is absorption? When an atom absorbs some energy, it goes to the higher state. That is what the electrons in the lower orbits absorb energy and go to higher energy levels. By themselves, these electrons cannot go to higher energy levels. They require external energy. This phenomenon is known as absorption. Once they go to the higher energy levels, they don't remain there but come down immediately. Such type of transitions from higher energy levels to lower energy level is known as spontaneous emissions. In the case of stimulated emissions, the particles cannot come down from the higher energy state to the lower energy state by themselves. They come down only when external energy is given to them. So what is the basic difference between spontaneous emissions and stimulated emissions? In both the cases, photons are given out. But in the case of spontaneous emissions, it is incoherent. Whereas in the case of stimulated emissions, it is coherent. Now, why is spontaneous emissions incoherent? The reason is, the particles from different higher energy levels come down to the ground level. In doing so, they give out different values of energy, which means 
different values of frequencies and different values of wavelength. A broad spectrum is given out in the case of spontaneous emissions. Whereas stimulated emission occurs only between any two energy states. When the transitions are only between two energy states, then what happens is the energy values given out is the same leading to the same value of frequency and wavelengths. That is the basic difference between spontaneous emissions and stimulated emissions. Now what about non-radiative recombinations? In the case of radiative recombinations, the energy given out is in the form of photons. Whereas in the case of non-radiative recombinations, the energy given out is in the form of heat. That is, even in this case, there is a transition from higher energy levels to lower energy levels. Now, what is Auger recombination? One electron from conduction band recombines with a hole in the valence band and releases energy. This energy may be taken by another electron in the conduction band. The electron that gained energy jumps to higher state and then comes back to the valence band by giving out its energy. One electron from conduction band recombines with a hole in the valence band and releases energy. This energy may knock out an electron and create a hole. So both the processes are non-radiative and both are called as auger recombinations. Surface recombination. Now we know surfaces and interfaces contain a large number of recombination centers because of the abrupt termination of the semiconductor crystal. Surfaces and interface may also contain impurities since they are exposed during the fabrication process. Recombination may occur at these sites. Recombination can have a significant impact on the behavior of the material. So till now, we have seen what is a radiative recombination and what is non-radiative recombination. These phenomena are applied in optoelectronic devices. This slide shows you the working or the picture of a LED that is a light emitting diode. A light emitting diode is essentially a PN junction diode that gives off light when it is forward biased. The amount of light emitted is directly proportional to the forward current. The value of the wavelength depends upon the energy gap of the PN junction. This diagram shows you the fabrication of a LED, which is essentially a PN junction. Okay. Now, how is it made? And how does it function? In a surface emitting LED, light is emitted in a direction perpendicular to the PN junction. In this case, a N-type layer is grown on a substrate and a p-type layer is grown on it by the process of diffusion. As we can see in the diagram, in the end region, the entire region is covered with a metallic coating, whereas in the case of p region, there is a gap so that the light can escape. Since total internal reflection may prevent the light from escaping, the entire thing, the LED, is enclosed in an epoxy resin of suitable refractive index so that the photons escape. Now, what is the working? The PN junction is forward biased. Electrons from N side get injected to P side. Whole injection from P side to N side is very less because the P side is thin. Electrons injected into the P side recombine with the holes, which results in spontaneous emission of light. This effect is called as injunction electroluminescence. 
these photons should be allowed to escape from the device without being reabsorbed. The recombination can be classified into two types direct recombination and indirect recombination. As the picture shows, in the case of direct recombination, the maximum of the valence band and the minimum of the conduction band occurs at the same value of k, where k is the momentum vector. In the case of an indirect band gap semiconductor, the maximum of the valence band and minimum of the conduction band occurs at different values of k, that is the momentum vector. Now, the efficiency of transition in the case of direct band gap semiconductor is better than that of an indirect band gap semiconductor. What are the characteristics of a LED? As you would see in the graph, it is quite similar to a PN junction. That is, as voltage increases, initially the increase in current is very less because the barrier has to be overcome. Once the barrier is overcome, even a slight increase in voltage leads to an increase in the current. Different colors are due to the different materials that we come across for the making of a LED. So hence, if you have understood the working of a PN junction thoroughly, we can very easily understand the characteristics and working of a light emitting diode. So in the case of LED, it is spontaneous emissions that gives out light. Thank you.